to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again, joining us, watching or listening, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. We're back from a, yes. a week off. Guys, we apologize for last week's lack of an episode. Unfortunately, we just had a scheduling issue. No, I do. Yeah. Um, I was out of town for the weekend, and generally that's when we record. We yep. didn't really have time during the week because by the time we could edit and get it all up, it just wouldn't have made sense. So, didn't have one last week. We nope. apologize, but we are back with no plans of taking another break anytime soon, except next week, and every week after that, we're done. Yeah. Um, That's coming soon. Stay tuned yeah. for the farewell. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not been a year yet. So this no. is the second time we've joked about <laughs> ending the series. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it is coming. It's going to happen. Oh, it's coming. Like You're welcome. A, like a... What's the thing that comes ominously? Like a storm? What's, yeah, wait, a storm. hang on. What's something, we'll that, what's something that comes ominously that no one cares about? Tax season. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. Uh, thanks. thanks. Anyway, Sorry guys, about that. so the schedule for today, we have a couple mm -hmm. things we want to talk about. First of all, we are going to start off with our card of the day, random card of the right. day. Uh, then we're going to go briefly and talk about Masters 25. Now that it's out, we just have a few things we want to mention, nothing too serious. Then we're going to go into Dominaria. Uh, we're a little late to the party getting on this just because of last week's lack of episode, but we did want to talk about it because it is a huge deal. Uh, then, of course, our question yeah, of the week fun. and our crack of packs uh, with our goal cards in mind. So let's start ourselves off with our random card of the day. Three, two, one. Bad. Keepers of you the You got faith. it. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, one color oh. is two white. A two, three. First, yeah, it's... That's it. Uh, so this was originally printed, by the way, in Legends. It was reprinted in Chronicles. Um, for some reason. For some reason. It's just a two, three for three. I don't... I, I think this is one of the cards with uh, a Bible verse on it, maybe. Is it? Maybe. Uh, so, and then the Archangel Antheus... He probably got made fun of in school. Spoke to them saying, Fear shall be vanquished by, vanquished by the sword of faith. Maybe. So back when wizards first yeah. made uh, first made magic, um, there were cards that had like quotes from Shakespeare on it. Yeah. Uh, quotes from the Bible. Quotes from different sci-fi things. Mm -hmm. So it added like a little uh, real world element yeah. sort of thing. It made it relatable. Yeah. And I think this might be that thing. If We don't have like a quote no, from it no, or anything, so I could be wrong, but I'm probably wrong. Um, <laughs> even so, uh, this card, in terms of functionality, sucks. Yeah. It is, its card type is a summon keeper, so it doesn't even have a tribal It doesn't even tribal have a tribal thing. synergy. It's literally filler. Just, at, not in a, a draft format. It's, if you have it and you don't have another playable, good. that's the only time. Mm, I mean, yep. literally there's no other use for this. It's terrible. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Nothing really to say about it. Nope. Cool. Alright, good. Cool. Moving on. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Alright, so moving on, um, we're just going to briefly talk about this. Masters 25, it's been out now for almost a week by the time this video airs. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're recording on Sunday, so we're a little bit behind. Day after St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Fun time to record. No, it's not. Uh, it's really not. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so Masters 25, we wanted to talk about this because there were some issues when it first came out. People were thinking that oh, the boxes could be Speculation. Speculation. Right. Um, so Rudy, if you don't know Rudy from Alpha Investments, um, he's a fairly big YouTube channel now and yep. grew, grew very quickly. Um, yeah. But anyway, he opened a couple boxes where two, uh, two of the boxes basically had 99% the same rares. Like, yeah. it was insane. All but one rare from each box was the exact same. And this caused a lot of stir in the community, people thinking, okay, maybe you can map these boxes, maybe we can find out where the rares, the good rares are going to be, we can pick them out, all that stuff. Um, which is an issue that we haven't really seen for years. It was an issue a long time ago in Magic. They changed the randomization process to make that not happen. Um, and, yeah, so they were thinking that might be an issue. Right. Um, right. He also released another video later on where two boxes had very similar foils. It was something like 75 to 80% of the foils were the exact same, uh, which again kind of raised that speculation. However, um, it seems that's just the luck of the draw for Rudy because every other box opening, at least that I know of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but most other box openings, including my own, which I've opened three at this point, not a ton because I'm not Rudy and I can't spend 20,000 on a set. 
Um, right. But uh, th it, this doesn't seem to be a consistent issue. It's not happening to us. It's not happening to anybody else that I know of. Right. Um, the uh, another YouTube channel, Desolator Magic, if you don't know who that is, um, had a history and card printing from what it sounds like and did a quick video on this. And he thinks that the randomization process was just changed. And because it was changed a little bit, Rudy kind of got the short end of the stick and happened to get some of these early boxes where the process either wasn't fleshed out completely yet or something along those lines. Um, his thought process on it is that in order to avoid having really amazing boxes and really terrible boxes, they changed the process essentially to make it so most boxes are going to fit into the middle of the road on value. So even if you pick up a box, you're not going to get you know, $50 worth of value out of a $200 box, but you're also probably not gonna get $500 worth of value out of a $200 box. So instead, the idea is uh, consistency is key. So hopefully you're gonna get a decent amount of value. You don't feel like you're losing too much, but you might gain a little bit. It's that sort of mentality. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, I think that's I great think because if you're investing $200 in a box, you want to get some value out of it. You uh, really don't yeah. want to get a terrible box. And that right. doesn't rule out either of these scenarios completely, but it just makes them less likely. Right. We don't know if that's true or not. However, it seems to be fairly consistent uh, through the box openings that I've seen and the ones that I've actually opened. Yeah. So, again, not saying for sure if it's right or wrong, just seems to be the case. So, yeah. It's kind of what we wanted to say on Masters 25. I don't think there was really anything else, but just wanted to mention that out to you guys. Yeah. So yeah, um, important things. Wizards says wizard stuff. Yeah. You never really know. Speaking of stuff wizards did. What are you speaking about? The next uh, next little segment here. Oh! <laughs> Dominaria spoilers. <laughs> Yet again. Yet so, again. Um, like the fourth time in the last couple of years, maybe. I See, I don't know how often... It was Ixalan, I think. Leaks that happen. Ixalan got a pretty big leak. I don't know if it was the right. full set. And then Iconic Masters got. Yeah, but that was kind of intentional. From like a, well, from like a tournament, people. It were, was Hascon. They played at Hascon, and people right. took pictures. Of course, you know people are going to take pictures of your stuff. Like, duh. Like, I mean, <laughs> call me stupid, but I honestly would not have thought of that. Really? Yeah. I'd never be like, Dude. you know what they're going to do? record all these cards yeah of course they will no nah, I, I wouldn't have thought of that I, honestly well maybe did, so. maybe that's my glass half full thing maybe so maybe wizards has their glass half full too i hope so half full of something fun <laughs> i don't know anywho uh yeah so we have the entire dominaria <laughs> set do revealed. we want to explain how it happened or just go into the set why don't you talk about how it happened? I, yeah, I can. It's pretty brief. So basically, on some Chinese network site, something like that, uh, it was the the set notes for the entire set, basically, that somehow got leaked. I don't know the exact process, but somewhere in China this happened. They were translated, and so now we have the entire set notes for the Dominaria set, meaning we know every single card in it. Um, we yep. also know... They had some release notes, so the way that they planned to release certain things were also included in that. Right. And there have been a couple articles since then um, talking about basically their redesign for trying to hype up the set now that we all know what the set is. Right. And so uh, art is still a big thing. We don't know art for most of it. Right. Um, so that will still be a thing if you're into the art of uh, magic. But yeah, it just kind of killed the hype a little bit. Did it though? That's a Fair point, to be honest, because there's actually some really good stuff in this. Yeah, it's the set looks great. Um, from my my opinion, we yeah, have yeah. the biggest thing for me is very minuscule, but it's just land war elves. No, and, that's a huge thing. Cause there for a while, wizards didn't print any one mana dorks. They like because, publicly said they would not do yeah, that because they were too lucrative. Yep. Um, and the it, it changes the skill gap so much because new players don't think to kill a one mana. mana yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so they weren't going to make them anymore. You had like three drop mana dorks or two drops that could only be spent to cast creature spells, yeah. stuff like that. So they were they added all these stipulations for them. Mm -hmm. But then in Dominaria, they just gave us land of war elves again, which is <laughs> awesome. So it's coming back to standard. That's sweet. Yes. Um, Dino decks love that. Yes, definitely. Yes. Wow. That it it just opens the door for a ton of things. Mm -hmm. um, it makes aggressive decks have to play faster. 
Uh, it makes control decks need uh, to prioritize answers a little differently. It just yep. it changes the format a lot, which I love. Um, and then my next biggest thing is Karn. I was yes. really, I was really not not concerned, but curious about what would happen to Karn. Um, I was a little concerned. Um, I'm less so now. I like the Karn. Yeah, it, he he's not as powerful. No, right. Good as, lord, no. As uh, old Karn, but. That's fine. It's, uh, yeah, so it's a four great. mana Karn, which yeah. I think is interesting because that actually... So the reason Karn was able to be so powerful, the original Karn... Yeah. I say the original, the Planeswalker Karn, not right. Silver Golem. Um, the reason he was able to be so good was because he had a very high casting cost of seven, which is pretty high for especially a standard format. Yeah. Um, because of that, he's really only played in Tron or something that can really, really ramp him out. Yeah. With a four mana Karn... Four mana is not that difficult to get to. A lot of people get there pretty easily and are looking to win maybe around that time. Oh, yeah. And so Karn actually, this Karn, should be able to fit into much uh, a much wider field of decks um, than the original, which I think is great because he actually does fit in most decks, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, he can. Any deck that will uh, utilize silver counters, anything yeah. like that, uh, he can work with well. And he also just is kind of an engine to look through your deck yeah um with his plus one uh which is sweet now he doesn't have an ult per se yeah really yeah. at all um but he makes little creature artifacts that do stuff he's not all right <laughs> he's not um scary at all really no, not really you want to kill him but just like as an annoyance um looks through your deck gives you card advantage he does he does, he does. You, you get to pick it up um and then he can make dorks that are one ones two twos whatever yeah. eventually um so i don't know he's not he's not it's he's underwhelming a but little bit i think it's but... functional is my point that i want to mm -hmm. make is that i don't think it's a bad card no i just think per se it's less than like a lot of people will probably have been hoping for. Definitely. That doesn't make it bad though. He I is I think that's really yeah, important. If you were hoping for another um Karn Liberated sort of thing, he's definitely a disappointment. And I definitely think it was unreasonable to think we would get another Karn Liberated. Well, yeah. Right? Like definitely. Of you course wanna... we want that, but like no, it's not gonna happen. Right. <laughs> like, because <laughs> thinking about modern now, if you give Tron another yeah, crazy yeah. thing, that's insane. And that's probably not the reason that they printed Karn so underpowered. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of unfair. He does a very niche thing. I don't know. He's going to be... A, he's going to fit into a lot of decks, yeah. but not going to be as effective, I think. Um, now, our other Planeswalker we get... Well... One of. Right. One of three. Uh, Teferi, I really, really like. I love Teferi. Uh, I think he's really good. Yeah, this Teferi is... At five, I think it's good that he's at five. I do too. But I think that also makes it... I mean, a five mana Planeswalker, a lot of times, that's like, eh, not so exciting. I think at five, mm -hmm. this is very well balanced. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Because the kinds of decks he goes in, five yeah. is fine. Five is They're fine. They're not looking to close out the game on turn five. Because he goes in control decks, right? 100% he goes in control yeah. decks. So let me just read through this really quickly. Yeah. His plus one, draw a card... At the beginning of the next end step, you untap two lands. So to put this in perspective, in a control deck, on turn five, ideally, you'll play out Teferi, draw a card with him, so you start cycling, which is exactly what you want to do. Then you untap two lands, which lets you put up counter spells of any kind, a secondary draw spell, something right. like that, any instant speed card, which, of course, control decks are going to have quite a few of. Oh, yeah. Um, so he enables card draw without setting you back too much. Which I think is great. Well, yeah, he definitely... I mean, I would say he doesn't really set you back. I uh, So I think it's dependent on where he's played. I think in standard, he doesn't set you back. I think if he sees... He's a little high for modern, yeah, but if he saw play in modern, he could set you back. I don't uh, think he touches modern. You don't think so? No, only because the control decks in modern... Like that he like blue-white, yeah. for instance. They yeah. need to get more threatening quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Uh, America, they just answer everything. Yeah, so they don't need him. Yeah. Um, um, may, yeah, probably not. But he is still very strong, I think, for standard especially. We yeah, do have yeah. the wizard counterspell. I say the wizard counterspell because 
in the wizard deck, it works basically as a counter spell. In any other deck, it's like a way more expensive counter spell, so it's not quite right. as good. Um, but in that deck, I think it'll be fantastic because mm -hmm. of this, because you'll have a wizard out, you'll play Teferi, draw a card, and then have that counter spell up for free, basically. So it's yep. great. Yeah. Um, his minus three, put target non-land permanent into its owner's library third from the top. So any problematic permanent does not just have to be a creature or anything like that. Right. It can be literally any permanent. You get three turns away, uh, which is perfect. And yeah. they still have to recast it, so that makes it way worse for them. Right. Um, it's minus eight, and worth noting, he does start at four loyalty, so it will take quite a while to get to, to the emblem yeah. here. But you get an emblem with whenever you draw a card, you exile target permanent and opponent controls. A fantastic ultimate, not one you necessarily expect to get to very often, but oh, if you did. hugely strong if oh, you can if get you there. Did, man. Oh my goodness. Imagine in Commander. Uh, that's, because yeah, that's, exactly that's where about. this will like most likely happen. In Atroxa Super Friends? Yeah. And then you can just have a, have a card draw engine of any yeah. kind and then just start... <laughs> Wristic you don't study. get that. You oh don't my get god. That. Yeah, it would be sweet. Yeah, it um, gets so nasty. Um, super yeah. strong, though. I really like Teferi quite yeah. a lot. Teferi is, I think, very well-powered. I think at yeah. 5, it's perfect, because I don't want to see it in Modern. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly. Like, the effects are good enough for Modern, but at 5... At 5, it's a bit much. Um, um, I could be wrong. I wouldn't but... be hugely surprised if we see it. At least try it out in Modern. I don't think it'll be competitive I think it'll be modern. tested. Probably. Oh, yeah, um, everything gets tested. Online, but... but I don't think that, Yeah. you know... Um, uh, We'll move on to the last Planeswalker really quick. Jay of Ballard. I feel like I didn't like this one. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember either, actually. So it's a five loyalty Planeswalker, four, five, two, and three red, which does make it a little bit more difficult to cast, worth noting. So plus one, add three red to your mana pool oh, no, and like spend this, this mana oh, only right. to cast instant or sorcery spells. So it ramps you into instants and sorceries. That's fine. Kind of classic red in that instance. Um, a secondary plus one, discard up to three cards and then draw that many cards. Again, right. a pretty classic red ability, the looting or the rummaging, I guess, technically. Right. Um, and perfect. I think it's fine. Minus eight, uh, you get an emblem with you may cast instants and sorcery cards from your graveyard. If a card cast this way would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. So it's basically a buyback for every instant and sorcery or a flashback, excuse me, yep. in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, pretty good. Yeah. I think it's mo definitely the most underwhelming Planeswalker of the three, though. Um, I think so. Like, these, all of these uh, abilities scream Storm to me. Oh, gosh, yeah. Here's the problem. It's five mana. Yeah, like, that doesn't really work for Storm. I guess, with Storm, I guess you can get this out pretty early if mm -hmm. you... I mean, you have a bunch of spells of Neji mana. That but being like, said, you want do you want to net that mana into this? Like, exactly. No, not That's at all. Thing, is, <laughs> this is an awesome... <laughs> This kit, I'll say, is great yes. for exactly that, exactly Storm. Yeah. But it's getting it it's out like a little you, much. How do you yeah. do it? Exactly. Um, this is literally Storm within a Planeswalker, if you think about it. But yeah. it just, I don't know, it's not I mean, my it's favorite. It's in Flames on an emblem. Oh, yeah. It's uh, Pyretic Ritual. Is that it? Uh, no, that's Pyretic or Desperate Ritual. I think, yeah. That's Either one. Right. And then, uh, I mean, you Card advantage is great, always. Yeah, but cathartic reunion kind of style thing. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah, it's just like not amazing. It's fine. I don't think it's bad. I but think it's, it's just good. I just don't know what kind of deck it would go into. I don't either. Um, like modern, I don't think gets it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there might be something funky and standard that I'm not thinking of right now. But like, it's we're all dominated by blue black. Yeah. Right now, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, really, just the scare of God. <laughs> uh, scare of God takes lives. Uh, he, does. he does. Literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty interesting. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the Planeswalkers in this set. Again, Jaya being kind of the worst. I See, I don't think so. I think if she finds the right deck, I think mm -hmm. she's much more lucrative <clears throat> than the other two. Um, if there is a, a brew that can really exploit her somehow, I think that she will be way more powerful. Fair enough. Because you think about all those abilities. like They are great abilities. If no Storm question. got the option to do those things like turn two and on yeah so I, like I don't ball. see <laughs> i don't see storm like ever dropping a game like yeah, if they yeah. have all of those options passed in flames so early uh you know what's frustrating though about mm. this is being a storm player because i love storm yeah 
It's frustrating because they are great abilities. All right. three of them are perfect for Storm. Yeah. But it's not good enough for Storm. <laughs> it's like yeah. I know it's just like a tease. Like, come on, you know. A little bit. A, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. Karn does, in my opinion, I really like Karn. Fits in a lot more decks now. Teferi is amazing for control. Super right. stoked about that. A little unsure with Gyra. Oh, I'm I'm totally um, unsure. I think there's more decks she misses than yeah, the other two. Definitely. But. Um, if yeah. she finds a home, I do agree with you. Those yeah, abilities are fantastic. So hopefully we will find a home for her. I hope so. I just, I, just, I don't I don't see it I don't yet. Either. So we'll she's got the highest we'll ceiling, but yeah. the lowest floor. She's got a big old house. That was great. All right. Uh, <laughs> another card I wanted to go over, and this is really only to mm -hmm. feature this saga card yeah, and this mechanic that we have. So Phyrexian Scriptures is the one that they've actually released the art to. Yeah, um, not a huge fan of the art. I'm not either. The art looks honest, so strange. It's so text heavy. I don't, it just looks terrible. Anyway, yeah. so two and a, two black. Excuse me for an enchantment saga. This is a mythic rare. Uh, at, as this saga enters and after you dr your draw step, excuse me, at a lore counter, sacrifice after three. Yep. It's a little confusing, but basically when you play it, you get a lore counter, and then after your draw step, it gets another lore counter. Right. And this is repeated until it has three on it. At three, you sacrifice it after the effect is uh, right. in effect. So at one, you put a plus one, plus one counter onto one target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. So you just get that effect. It's sort of like a mini. I think of it kind of like a mini Planeswalker for just like two turns, maybe three turns. Yeah, you know uh, what I mean? yeah that's fair. Uh, at two, destroy all non-artifact creatures. So the idea being you protect your creature from this board, board wipe. Sure. Uh, and then at three, exile all cards from all opponent's graveyards. Mm -hmm. And then after that effect takes place, you sacrifice it. So Saga right. is basically the new mechanic, one of the new mechanics that's coming out with this. And so we just wanted to feature it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Saga? So Saga, I think, is really cool, honestly, um, because it's so hands off other than casting it. Yeah. Like it gives you some choices once they come in. Like yeah, there's a sure. red one that does some fun stuff, but comes in, you have some choices to play with. Um, and it's, I don't have to do anything else to make this card work. Yeah. So if my opponent answers it, that's fine. I invested yeah. four mana into this thing that did some stuff. Whatever. It did something immediately, so that's kind of. But nice. if they don't, if like it's putting a threat out there, right? Yeah, if yeah, you think, yeah. Like especially this one, it's a sweeper. Yeah, they're gonna have to play around it. Right, exactly. Um, so it it forces my opponent in to consider something that I really don't have to touch other than turn four. Sure. Um, that's so, fair. So I think that. I think it's really interesting. I don't think it's an amazing mechanic. I'm not yeah. like a. I'm not all oh, super excited about it. No, uh, either. But it is just another like strategic element you have to think about. It's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once you play it, so it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. I really don't like the art, though. I'll say that. I don't like the art. So hopefully we've shown this on the screen. Um, but basically, <laughs> if we haven't, on the off chance, um, text takes up about half the card, and yeah. then half the other card. It's like art and. Tech. It's just, it's weird. You'll see it. It's it weird. looks funny. Um, yeah, it's not great. But yeah, how do you feel about sagas? I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. Um, okay. So, what do you like about it? I like the fact that it's a one time cost for mm -hmm. multiple effects. Yeah. That's always, that historically has been very good for other things, right. which I like. I mean, it's, think about planeswalkers, it's, like you said. I related a bit to a planeswalker because, again, you're getting multiple effects every turn. Mm -hmm. You get one, and mm -hmm. that's it. Um, However, I think it's a little, in this instance especially, it's a little weird. Now, obviously, you're going to deck build to make this okay, but like destroying right. all your non artifact creatures, that does affect everybody. So it does yeah. affect you. That could be a downside. I think there are a couple others that have potential downside for both players. Sure. Um, which is fine. That just means you have to build around it, right? Like, that's whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know, though. It just, why not just make a plane walker? I mean, like, <laughs> it certainly it changes the the game as soon as it comes in. Like it's that strong. That's true. Even if it's not a great card, it changes the entire game because yeah. it affects everybody, right? So especially in Commander, think about that. Commander like, is where this I, these saga cards yeah. I think are going to be out there. That's just like powerful, flopping for sure. a a bomb on the table, yeah. like. Well, it's sort of like you'll in this in instance, turns. it's like playing a Nev disc because it's like okay, yeah. I can blow up the world. Just tell me when, you know. In this case, it's well, like I'm on a clock. I have the to button. do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
but like <laughs> they have to play around it until that actually right. happens. So yeah. it, it's similar in that respect, I would say. Definitely. Um, um, so I think it's I think this one in particular is cool. Yeah. Um, maybe we, maybe we find another. Uh, do, do, do. The, I know there's a red one out there. Oh, oh, there's a good one. one. There's a good one. Uh, Chainer's Torment. Uh, at one and two, it deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. And then at three, create an XX Black Nightmare Horror Creature token, where X is half of your life total rounded up. It then deals X damage to you. Um, I don't know. Interesting. I mean, I'm kind of cool with it. Yeah, it's fine. It's classic black. Yeah. Drain life and then pay life to make a thing. Kind I of. think, like, this is way better and limited than oh, yeah. uh, Phyrexian what, scriptures. Scriptures, was. yeah. Um, uh, I am just on the fence about them. I think... In limited, some of them will be fantastic. There's I think always one or two. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, if you've got your board built up, I think that's a fine, mm -hmm. fine. I think it'd be way better if you could deal the damage to uh, a creature. That'd yeah. be sweet. It'd be way better, That'd but be that's be so much more a red thing than a black thing, unfortunately. Um, it is to but deal the damage directly. But like, yeah, no. Me. Um. So anyway, Saga, brand new thing. Kind of cool. Going to be interesting, I think, yeah. Neat. Um, another card I just wanted to throw out there. We have a new Mox, guys. Uh, Mox Amber. Significantly worse than every other Mox, obviously. But legendary artifact. Yeah. Tap it to add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. Um, hey ho, Commander. Hey ho, Commander. This is a zero cast artifact. This will go yeah. in every Commander deck ever. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for that. I don't... I, legendary permanents are like a huge theme with this set, so I think What's, standard yeah. is going to see this, of course. But like, yeah, definitely. outside of that, I don't really know if it's like actually that good. Well, I mean, here's the <laughs> question: um, because it is a zero cast spell, yeah, uh, does Storm want it at all? I don't think so, because it's not actually cycling. It's giving your, it's getting your storm count up, which is great. But the whole draw of getting your, you want cards like Manamorphose, which effectively yeah. cost zero, but draw you a card. You need to right. keep that cycling going. So unless you can find a way to draw a card off of this, no, I don't think you need it. Um, mm. I think Storm's pretty well fleshed out enough. My yeah. question is, does Affinity want it? What legendary creatures is affinity? That's yet? my thing, is there aren't many legendary creatures, but it is a zero cast artifact, so it does trigger metal craft and things like that. I guess hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess the question then is it lucrative enough for the affinity mechanic itself, right? I don't know, yeah. Um because you're you basically just pitch a card to increase your mm -hmm. affinity count and that's it. But I you can know. sacrifice can you you can sack to Ravager. Oh, that's true. So there is some synergy there. I guess that's honestly not bad because it's zero. It's a zero cast artifact. You don't have to invest yeah. anything except for a card um, slot. It may be that this makes other cards viable in Affinity. I don't know why or if that's actually a thing. But. I don't think so, only because there's not that many uh, legendary colorless things like artifact yeah, stuff that's that true. Affinity cares about. But uh, I'm open to being wrong. Yeah, I mean, I kind of hope I am because it is a new Mox, which is pretty exciting. Um, there are a lot of other cards we could go on about, mm -hmm. but I did just want to mention briefly the Checklands are back, uh, which I'm happy to see. I yeah. think they're decent. They're not super pricey or anything like that, but they're decent lands, and they're not, I mean, they're not like dollar cards either, so no. it's kind of nice they're to good. see them back. <laughs> yeah. um, Sulfur Falls probably being the most expensive, I would say, just because of like Storm and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all happy to see that. Um, overall, I'm pretty stoked about this set. The set is big. The set is unique like yeah. they have a lot of weird interactions within the set like, it's a lot of tribal synergy too but yeah way. yeah the, 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 like the pro hex proof from certain colors is interesting that's an interesting uh, thing yeah which um i understand <laughs> why not just give it protection from the fire yeah uh we did it in m11 i don't know yeah um wizard's lightning feels bad it's weird, right? Feels it's lightning bad. bolt, but only if you control a wizard. Feels bad. Otherwise, it's a three mana lightning bolt, which is terrible. Feels bad. I uh, yeah. I mean, in a wizard deck, I'd probably run it in standard. No, you have to. But like, yeah. Other than that, the option to have bolt is too too good. Yes. And there's the same for uh, counter spell um, wizards retort. If not, it's just cancel. Otherwise, it's cancel. Yeah. Um, it's interesting they hinted at certain things like that. And there's some callbacks. Like, obviously, getting a lot of characters that we've had in past sets is yeah. awesome. Um, a lot of the flavor stuff seems pretty cool, but I don't know. I I really like this set. I just want it to be really good. 
I think it's going to be an awesome draft set. The amount of yeah. legendary creatures legendary, running yeah. around will I be think, interesting. For yeah, sure. people are going to learn how the legend rule works real quick. <laughs> because, I mean, we're going to run into the situation where you pick up two of the same legend in a draft, but you can only play one at, this, at a time. Oh, yeah. And people are like, some people don't pick up on legend rule stuff because they don't play with legendary creatures that often. If you only draft, that doesn't happen that often. Yeah. So like I think I think most people know the rule. Hopefully so, but I mean some people are gonna mess it up. Just telling you. Oh well, sure, yeah, but so what? Um, everybody makes mistakes. Because you suck at magic. No, just kidding. You. Yeah, don't. I do suck at magic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, there's some really good cards. We're not gonna. I mean, we just wanted to pick out a few to maybe go over we'll, some of the big ones. Maybe we'll do a sound. Maybe. maybe that wasn't that wasn't tedious. Arduous. Um. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Squee the Immortal. Yeah, Squee's back. Um, if you guys want a set review, Squee. maybe let us know. And if you do, then we probably still won't do it. <laughs> no, we'll think about it. Kevin won't do it. I will. I would do it. Alone. Um, In my room. Would you? With my cats. With your cats. What do you think of this kitty? And it'd say nothing because it's a cat. Yeah, that's how cats work, in case you don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, Dominary is sweet. Yeah, probably. Pretty stoked about it. Probably? Um, probably. You think so? Probably. I'm fighting a yawn. Censor. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, moving on. Obviously, if you have any questions about Dominaria, if you don't know where the full set list is, you can just go to, like, Mythic Spoiler. Really, any spoiler site, you can see the whole list. Mythic um, Spoiler's always been my go-to. That's my go-to, also. It's very pretty. Yeah, it is. Um, so definitely check out the set. Let us know what your thoughts on Dominaria are. We would be interested to hear them. Are you excited about it? Are you not excited about it? Are you uncaring and apathetic about everything in your life? Um, do you only play Yu-Gi-Oh! and got routed here through very weird YouTube magic holes? Good. Convert. You've made a terrible mistake. Um... <laughs> Does moving anyone, on. Does anyone still play? I don't. I have no yes, idea. people still play. Uh, moving on to our question of the week, guys. The one we posted two weeks ago uh, was, "What card do you believe should have gotten a reprint?" Uh, very recently, we were kind of hinting at in Masters Twenty Five. Um, so a right. bunch of great responses, some of which I super agree with. So Scapeshift, uh, Through the Breach, Noble Hierarch. Yes. yes. Yeah. That was the number one reprint that should have gotten. That, that was just stupid. Yeah. Uh, True Name Nemesis. I really like that, yeah. actually. Uh, somebody said Collected Company. I don't agree no. with Collected Company. It we just in, had it yeah. like a couple of years ago, and it's really no. not that pricey of a card. No. Um, it's not like it needs it for financials. I mean, it's a good card. It's like a $10 card, maybe. It's but a it's fine not like card. We're it's looking fine. at cards on a much bigger level, I think, than that. Noble when, Hierarch. Cards that are like 80 hundred dollars that should yeah, be yeah yeah noble hierarch um phyrexian processor which is a funny one um <laughs> squee <laughs> yeah uh hedron uh, crab pointed out jace period we can't have enough jace period we need more jace period jace comma jace comma jace i don't hate jace at all i don't think he wanted jace but I'm we gonna got go, him <laughs> i'm gonna go with that was facetious yeah from hedron crab yeah he's come out of his shell yeah. He like he's at that stage in crab life where he doesn't have a home. And he's yeah. like, I'm pissed at everything. Me, 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 me. Blue sucks. Me, 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 me. So yeah. he's a little salty right now. That's okay. Salty crab. Um, Colossal Dreadmaw, good luck. We got him. Um, Counterspell. Yeah, we got that too. Hierarch. Uh, fetches and Shocklands. So fetches, I, I, think so. I don't. And the only reason being we just had fetches. I get that we could, they could use more of a price drop, but we literally had them less than a year ago. Everyone needs fetches. I, I feel like I'm okay with them not I've, doing here's that. Here's my thing. I think for collectors, they want to hold value. There's plenty of niche cards out there that you can go and chase. Yeah. Like there are cards like fetch lands that are so they're so heavily used and played in every format they're legal. Yeah. I think it's unfair to hide them behind a price wall. For some people, and I know I the, agree with that. The I community just think it'd be sets weird. the price, really. But yeah, I mean, definitely. I don't care about being. I just weird. think it's a give little more weird that we just had it. So we're just giving like, new fetch lands. They do the same thing. I'd be, I'd be fine with it. Just rename them. <laughs> yeah, shock lands. I would have been okay with. Um, they're not super pricey though, so it's not yeah. like the biggest deal in the world for them to reprint that. I don't think. Right. Uh, Giora and Maelstrom Wanderer. Maelstrom Wanderer. We also just kind of recently had in Eternal Masters. Yeah. Um, Giora. 
I don't think needs a reprint. She's like super cheap anyway. I don't remember what she does. Um, she's not that great. Doubling season, 100% agree oh, with doubling god. season. Oh god, yes. Um, Manlands was an interesting include because huh. I, I actually would have yeah. liked that. I like the filter lands. I'm fine with that. I think if they had replaced them with Manlands, I would have been just as happy. Would have been just fine. Um, yeah, I like the Manlands, honestly. The blue white one. I can't think of the name. It's the oh my gosh ravine? I can't think of the name. Is it the ravine one? No, that's raging ravine. That's green red. Is it the oh my it's gosh? Cloud. I feel so dumb. I should know this guy's being a control player ish. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on really quick while you're looking that up. Uh, sure. Delver of Secrets for some reason people thought should have been in Delver's. I mean Delver's good, but not amazing. Celestial, Celestial Colonnade. Colonnade. That's Duh. it. Delver would have been a good flavor card. It would have been a really good example for Innistrad, which would have been much better than some of the other cards they oh, picked. Yeah. Uh, tree of Redemption, we're looking at you. Um, <laughs> I'm a tree. Um, <laughs> cut me down. Anyway, Delver would have been much better yeah. even at common. Um, <laughs> Bob, uh, Dark Confidant. Would have been happy to see a Dark Confidant. Bob, I would super have been pretty agree with good. Bob. Uh, Crucible of Worlds. Oh, nah. Would have been fine with it. I, I mean, it's a good card. I don't think so, but it only does one thing. It well, does, yeah, deck, for sure. I don't think so. Um, Black Lotus, never going to happen. <laughs> Goyf. I mean, they could always reprint Goyf, yeah. but that falls in the same thing with the Fetchlands. We did just kind of have Goyf pretty recently. Well, no. That was two years ago. It was in Modern Masters. It was a year ago. It was less than a year ago. It was a year ago. It was less than a year ago. Uh, Uroch Champion, we just had that out? the summer of that? last year. What month was that? It was the beginning of summer, so in a couple months, I don't it would know. have been a year. I don't know when months work. Okay, so it's almost a year. It was a year ago. That's what I said almost a year. <laughs> it's a year ago. Um, Iraq Champion, we just had, so the, I mean, literally, we just had. Um, Simeon Spirit Guide, good job. We, we did, got that yeah. one. Check, um, <laughs> check plus. Let me see. Crop Rotation. I do like Crop Rotation. It's, not a, it's a common, so it's not like a huge deal, but it would have been a good card from the Urza's uh, block to have that. Snowlands. That's fair. Snowlands would have been oh, cool. Oh, wow. Why? Um, there's no real reason we would need Snowlands. It's just a cool thing. But, like, I don't know. Uh, Black Cleave Cliffs. <laughs> so the fast lands. Specifically Black Cleave. No, just Black Cleave Cliffs. Just Black Cleave Cliffs. We'll leave out the other. What's the land cycle we're going to put in this master set? <laughs> Black Cleave Cliffs. <laughs> and nothing else. You mean the else. cycle? Nope. Just the cliffs. Nothing else. Um, Black yeah. Cliffs needs help. I would have been okay with that cycle. That was a good cycle. Yeah. Um, it's fun. And they are actually pretty pricey. Some of them. Um, snappy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Snappy. I mean, yeah. Again. Again. He's used in so many places. Yeah. Freaking um, do it. Goryo's Vengeance. Yes. Again, that falls in line with Through the Breach. That's you the think? instant reanimator. Yeah, it's like a $40 card. Oh, wow. I didn't know it's that. It's like stupid expensive because it's really good in modern. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Emrakul, the original, would have been pretty sweet, but they're, I mean, it's like... Uh -huh. Emrakul's good at being a big fat monster that just destroys everything, Don't which is cool. Like that. But it's not like it's viable in that many decks. You see it in like as a package in certain decks, but like yeah. it doesn't. It's, fun, it's not like though. a build. Uh, I don't know. It is fun. I would have liked to have seen it's that. Heck of fun. Um, and snaring bridge. Good job. We got that. Chalice. We got that. Mox opal. That was one that I thought they would reprint really? because it is way too expensive right now. Hmm. Um, and it gets a lot of play in any artifact based deck, but also uh, lantern control right so i would have been happy with that guy's cradle no not gonna happen <laughs> another black lotus did it not oh wait that's the never mind yeah i'm thinking of guy's blessing and then our last one tree of redemption <laughs> i'll fight you i won't tree's tree's fine no it's not <laughs> tree is no, tree's fine i wish it wasn't in why is it in this set that's the thing is it's, <laughs> it just it's doesn't fine, make but... sense it's yeah if it was in a normal set whatever because it's a mythic and a master set that is stupid. If you don't know, a lot of local game stores are like, if you open a Tree of Redemption, I don't know if you've heard this, if you uh -huh. open a Tree of Redemption, they will buy back that pack from you because they think that's ridiculous. And I'm not making this up. We that's had somebody amazing. confirm it. Uh, the guy that made, Juan, that made 21 Damage, the app yeah. that we use, his local game store does that. That's incredible. <laughs> so I'm just saying, that's a stupid include. Yes, it covers with Triskaidekaphobia, which is also a stupid That's why, you gotta, you gotta add stuff for limited. That's such fine. a dumb include. Anyway. <laughs> why? You gotta add cute, crazy things. Yeah, it's cute, but like, it's a master set. <laughs> so, <laughs> these, these have become draft center. So you're saying when you center. think Innistrad, 
No, I'm not. I'm saying you think Tree of Redemption is <laughs> that represented it? No, in a draft, you need to have some dumb thing to do. They could some have silly almost anything else. <laughs> like literally. Yeah, but that's like a cute thing. I mean, yeah, it's just it's Innistrad. Like it was the you pretty unanimously the best set. I mean, it's the, a lot of people's favorites. It's well, it's my favorite. Um, I don't know about the maybe not the best, but it's a favorite for most know. people, and like. To have Tree be the mythic that you represent with it, I mean, come on, just do it justice, that's all. At least put Delver in. But, I mean, you didn't get any flagship cards from any of the other sets that got in there. Yeah, which is my biggest gripe with it. But, like... I mean, I'm not saying they have to be super high value cards, but, like, Delver, Delver's a classic card. It's not super expensive, yeah. it's like a dollar card. Just throw Delver in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's fine. They did it with Brainstorm, I'm happy they put Brainstorm in. I am That's too. good. Brainstorm Bolt. Fine with that. Awesome. Bolt. Yeah, that's awesome. great. Simeon Spirit Guide. Awesome. Diabolic Edict. Uh, awesome. Nettle Sentinel. Um, what was it Pyroblast and Hydro? No. Mm -hmm. Red Elemental Blast and Blue Elemental Wasn't it? I thought it was Pyro and Hydro. I don't know. It was one of the two. They basically did the same mm -hmm. thing. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, they had a lot of good value, I think, in this set, weirdly. Especially in the foil slot. If you pick up a foil like Nettle Sentinel, right? Which oh, is God. just a common. I picked up like two of them. In the three boxes that I opened. That's like five, ten bucks. Cool. It's fine with me. Pays for the pack. But I'm, I digress. I'm confused about what you're upset about. Now. I don't know. I'm just upset that they picked stupid cards to hype Really just the tree? Sets. No, there's a lot of cards actually that I didn't agree you don't with. Care about but the, the tree is the one I'm most pissed off about. What's wrong with the environment, Kev? You don't like the environment? No. Wow. All right, moving on. <laughs> no. Um, no. I just think it's stupid. Anyway, this week's question of the week. What card are you most excited for in Dominaria? Keep it simple. Um, the full set's online, so you can check it out, but there are a lot of cards to be excited about, so we want to know what you're most excited about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You. You. In the back. Behind the person watching this video. <laughs> the person's mom. In the back. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Mrs. <laughs> your mom's name. Hey, Mrs. Smith. I hope you're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, man. This just... Disintegrated. Uh, rivals. You know, I wish you were a better son. You gonna play Puzzle Quest? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> what? No way. All right, I quit magic. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I know we joked about it. But... All right. What's our? Uh, what's your gold card? Uh, I forget. The hungry dinosaur. Yeah, that one. Uh, mine's the primal dinosaur. <laughs> primal tide. They're all primal. <laughs> Neza Hall, isn't that it? Yep, that's it. I'm that's not even one. looking at these cards, so that's a problem. Uh, right. I didn't get it. I got Path of Metal, which is a cool card, but not one that I would first pick. Mastermind Acquisition. <laughs> Somebody said, on as I suspect as a joke at least, that that is the best tutor in the game. And I said, ha, huh, good one. Hoping that they were being sarcastic, because it didn't really seem like it. Any tutor is great. This is not the no, best tutor in the it's game. It's really bad. Good talk. Um, Good talk. <laughs> what's the best limited card here? I think maybe... <laughs> you have not a very good pack. I don't. <laughs> My gosh. It might be... Actually, like Swift that. Warden. I was thinking about Sailor. Weirdly. Um, That's probably better, but like... Yeah, because this just doesn't do anything. It hits Ascend quicker. Eh. A crap There's a deck, like a five color deck built around that unlimited, which I think is funny. I, I mean, it's not very good, either. just to clarify. It's Sailor of Means, if you didn't hear him. I don't care about Ascend. I think it's Swift Warden for me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, three mana flash. When it enters the battlefield, the target Merfolk I control gains hexproof. I like it because it's a combat trick on a 3 3 for 3. Sure. Um, Seems yeah. fair. I like um, that a lot. So I got two cards that I'd go between. Um, my rare, definitely not. It's one of the flip land things, the whatever. Uh, Water Knot is just removal in blue. It also helps you get to Ascend, which I think is cool because it's an enchantment. Uh, Majestic Helioptorus is the other card. Uh, it's a 2 2 for 4 with flying, which is fine, but it also gives another creature, or another dinosaur, excuse me, uh, flying, which I think is pretty good. So I'd probably take that. Yeah, I think the, um, the, the Helioptorus. Yeah. It's not a real weird name. Dinosaur. Is it? I don't actually, Might actually know. Be, I don't know. Hey Google. Just looking this up. I also did get a Stormfleet Sprinter, which is cool. 
I don't particularly like pirates in limited though, which is weird because they're actually pretty good. I was gonna say, do you not? Not really. I like dinosaurs. Big fatty fats. Big wow. fatty fats. That's what I just said. Wow. Are you still looking this up? Yeah, I didn't get anything for Heliopterus. I did no. get something for um, uh, Heliopolis. Oh. It's a city in Egypt. It's got um, itty bitty Washington Monument, but for Egyptians in it. <laughs> but for Egyptians. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's oh, funny. That's, oh, that's really cool. Wouldn't that be dope, album art? Yeah. Don't show them. You guys can't see it. it. Sorry about it. We're just going to talk. You guys hang if you want to. Yeah. Um, um, there's a lot of pointy stuff there. Heliopolis. And on that note. <laughs> Dang. Well, right. anything else you want to talk about before we head out? How was your week? Have a good week. It was grand. St. Patty's Day took it out of me. Yeah. I didn't Ooh. do much for St. Patrick's Day. I did too much. Ooh. Right. I danced my Irish butt off. Oh, that's good. I forgot to tell you, I think. I learned how to swing dance. I I knew this day would come. That was pretty fun, actually. And I hate that it's here. It was fun. Monica and I did I have a swing. A, I have a theory. Yeah, what's that? That This is not magic related anymore, guys. Just that you can leave if you want. That everyone's <laughs> momentum yeah. abruptly stops for, for a year. Yeah. Once they say the phrase, I learned how to swing. Are you see what? Why? Because it's just one of those things. It's like a, a law in the universe that. It's a dumb law. All right, we're gonna slow your roll a bit. That You're getting fun. way too comfortable with yourself. It was fun. I I'm not a dancing per. I don't like to dance that much. But like, I don't. It really, was fun. Unless I'm toasted. I was not toasted. I think that's a family-friendly term you can say on. Yeah, that's fine. Toasted. Toasted. Zooted. Uh, mind boggled. Mind. Now boggled. it's magical. Lady. Slippery boggled. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I. I think I drank a few slippery boggles, maybe. <laughs> if that's a beverage name. We should make a beverage called. Slippery oh, dude, boggled. that'd be so good. Yeah, all right, all right. Here's what you do. Um, Sell it at game It'd be stores? blue sours. Uh, something green. We need something green. Mm. Um, maybe just like sours, triple second food diet. I don't know. I could. We could make. I'm gonna that make drink. it. I'm yeah. gonna make it, dude. When we open our game bar, whatever our gaming that is, bar. yeah, whatever it is, like Battle and Brew. That's a thing. Yeah, a bari. If you're in Charlotte, go to a bari. You should check out a bari. I don't know what that is actually. It is an arcade bar, oh. like Atari, but a bar. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, dude. Battle it's... and Brew is that, but in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. A bari sweet. Yeah. I'm sure Battle and Brew is sweet. I'll go there. It one sounds night. sweet. I've never been yet. We should go. I plan on it. Can I play Starcraft there? I'd like to play Starcraft. Um, all right, guys. On uh, that note, we just hit the 48 minute mark, which is the cue. Oh yeah, good. To, we had the, all right. Filler, we're just dragging done. this out. Filler no. done. We don't have to uh, guys, we appreciate you watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on everything. You can turn that yeah. little bell on to get all the notifications if you would like. Or turn it off. If you do not like. You should probably turn it off, let's be honest. I'm um, turn it on, but then regret it. Then immediately turn it off. Just to say you did. Um, guys, we appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Gavin. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll leave you with my name's Will, so you can leave now if you want. My name's Will. Okay, <laughs> so when oh, you really? said just to say you did, I pictured... <laughs> Instantly, someone going up to their mom like, "Hey, yeah. I did a thing today. <laughs> Hit the bell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> honey? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, YouTube. It's got oh. the little just, mom. Let me go show you. It's he <laughs> pull up a random YouTube channel. It's a rush. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> you can get notifications for three seconds, three whole seconds. <laughs> you turn it off. <laughs> oh, give you can, the outro again, Cam. You can <laughs> trick those people into thinking you care about them. <laughs> Oh. What anyway, happened? for real, guys, we're going to leave. <laughs> I'm not saying my name again. This has been It Resolves. My name's Kevin. My name's Will. I was going to think of a funny name, and it didn't. No, you should have gone with it. This has been It Resolves. Kevin, <laughs> <up>, me. <laughs>